uh, very good afternoon everyone uh, we are back here for our next session uh, is happening today right now is to unlock the power of dna we have with us uh, dr neerja reddy who is going to take us through the session and and tell us a lot about our genes and what can our genes tell us and and you know what we can learn from them in order to know your predisposition to a lot of diseases and how to sort of mitigate the risk going forward in life uh thank you uh, nature for uh, accepting to do this session for us i'm uh, really, really thankful so i'll uh, briefly uh, start with the introduction of uh, nature and then we'll uh, hand over the stage to nature so Uh, Nija Reddy Malida is a uh, board certified by American Board Genetic Counseling. She has over seven years of experience in providing genetic counseling in prenatal, pediatric, oncology, and adult genetics in national and international settings. She has worked in research and has expertise in telegenetic counseling. She is currently the VP of uh, Genetic Counseling at My Map My Genome. Once again, a warm welcome, uh, Nirja, and I would like to hand over the stage to you for your presentation. Thank you, Shiva, for the kind uh, introduction. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nirja. I am a board-certified genetic counselor at Map My Genome, and currently the vice president for genetic counseling. It's a pleasure to meet with all of you today. Our uh, intention is to really talk about some of the prevention. um probabilities of doing prevention and and management of lifestyle disorders by using the power of your dna so i am uh, going to walk you through some of the basic information about genetics maybe take you a little bit um back to your school talk about a little bit of basic biology um and how we can use all of this information and the power of dna to um reduce the risk and prevent chronic illnesses as you all know india is one of the highest um today one of the highest uh, frequencies of having cardiac anomalies cardiac attacks cardiovascular diseases obesity and diabetes so we are the capital unfortunately uh, of cardiovascular conditions which we should not be proud about but uh, post covid that paradigm is slowly shifting people are realizing that there is more benefit in preventing health conditions uh, comorbidities like cardiovascular diseases and diabetes have worsened many individual symptoms unfortunately a lot of a lot of us have lost our family members our near and dear ones because of covid um the treatments for which got difficult with all the confounding comorbidities that we have currently so post covid there is a realization for all of us that we should probably start focusing more on being healthy rather than treating ourselves when we are sick and that's the basic focus that we have today so i'm going to share my slides and i'll walk you through the uh, to the introduction and some of the discussion that we have if you have questions please feel free to write it on the chat box and we will take it up at the end of the session so uh, one of the reasons why i put here saying abc's of life is because as we all know there are 26 alphabets in english our genetic code is the essential um, you know basis of our entire makeup right so can anybody guess how many how many letters do you have in your genetic information there are only four it's a t c and g just simple four letters that make up your entire genetic material permutation and combinations of these um put together makes up the instructions of the recipe for your body that exactly tells us how to function what to do when to do how do you grow up and all of this is designed so simply and so naturally right from birth So taking you back to high school if you all remember biology and i hope some of you liked biology um this is the basic structure and function of our cell right our body is made up of trillions and trillions of cells right each cell has something called a nucleus nucleus is essentially the power house of your cell now on inside each nucleus if you were to take your magnifying glass or your microscope and magnify to a certain extent you will see these structures called chromosomes chromosomes are nothing but your genetic material and it's just packed in a nice fancy manner so all of us have 46 chromosomes so you have 23 in pairs you get one copy from your mom you get one copy from your dad right so from 1 to 22 are numbered as autosomes and then you have the sex chromosomes in which males have an x and y and females have an x and x 
if you open up or unwind this chromosome which is nicely tightly packed you will see what we call as our genes so genes is nothing but your dna base pairs which is the letters the a t c and g put together so a certain sequence of your of your dna is referred to as a gene so gene is essentially a sentence our uh, dna is essentially the four letters that make up your genetic information so i hope this gives you some context to you know additional discussion that we are going to have further um one more interesting fact is if you were to open up the entire genetic material in our body and line it up together you could actually and you know measure it um you could go around the earth seven times so imagine how much genetic information is actually packed inside one single cell of your body right so we have 3 billion base pairs or letters per cell okay and it contains 25000 genes so these are essentially the genes that gives you instructions um any changes in these genes could also increase your risk of developing health conditions so let's understand a little bit of inheritance and what it means before we go ahead so certain genetic conditions can be passed on from one generation to the next these are essentially because there is a genetic change that causes a particular disease or causes a particular condition so i'm sure you all all have heard about uh, conditions called down syndrome which is fairly common in the general population wherein kids are born with certain uh, health conditions and health issues and they may look a little different from their parents this is a genetic condition often not inherited from the parents sometimes it may be so if there is a genetic condition or there's a simple trait you know we do inherit these from our parents and that's the reason why you look a little alike like your dad a little like your mom and a mix of both of them right because you have your own genetic information that comes from your mom and your dad and a combination of all of that makes you right so how the genetic changes are inherited in your family uh will determine you know who will be affected who may not be affected or who has an increased risk and who does now along with genetic factors in a family we also share a lifestyle and we'll talk a little bit more about that in some time a couple of more fun facts here so oops. um can you okay can you see my window now yes yes <clears throat> so what percentage of dna do you think you share with a monkey or rhesus monkey a banana and chimpanzee So I'll give you all like thirty seconds to write something fun in the chat box. Let me see what answers can you guys come up with. Oh, this is the chat box enabled. Yes, yes, it is. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, nobody has responded yet. All right. So let me give you the answer in that case. You share fifty percent of your genetic information with a banana. Can you imagine how different you look from a banana? You share about ninety-eight point five percent with a chimpanzee and ninety-three percent with a rhesus monkey. How much DNA do you think you share with each other? Ninety-nine point nine percent. which means there's only 0.1% that differs from you and your neighbor right but that 0.1% is what makes you you um so what is that that makes you so different from each other so if you take a section no, of no, no, the information and you have a bunch of letters called a t c and g uh, right now, and there's this one letter change called t that's marked in red and that's you there's not the person who instead of having the t has something called c and that's one of the reasons why you all are different from each other so we refer these as single nucleotide polymorphisms or snps so these single nucleotide polymorphisms which is essentially this one letter change that goes from t to a c makes you you and makes you so unique right so this is the reason why you are different from everybody else and there are more than 10 billion such changes that the human beings can have that makes you different from one another so a simple change from that t to a c 
may not be something that you can observe it may not make you know sometimes it may not have an evident physical manifestation but it may sometimes increase your risk of developing different health conditions these don't have to be inherited in the way that you know if it gets passed down everybody gets it uh, but it has a heritable component it is something that's shared between family members so when we think about chronic diseases for example cancers diabetes heart conditions stroke we know that these are severe conditions that affect majority of the population um you know health your lifestyle your preventative tests um being healthy eating healthy all of these things make a huge difference in reducing your risk of having chronic diseases right all of us have been told to go through our preventative tests annually and i know covid kind of uh you know made that more difficult because a lot of us have missed our annual examinations so what are other factors other than you know going through and having a healthy lifestyle or going through these examinations that can help us so when we think about these chronic conditions or health conditions these are essentially referred to as multifactorial diseases what does that mean it means that there are multiple Gen- multiple factors including genetic and non genetic that can increase your risk of developing the disease so i think about it like a puzzle so it's a puzzle wherein there are multiple pieces that when fits in together increases your risk of developing the disease one is your lifestyle so alcohol intake smoking intake how much red meat consumption do you have how much fatty foods do you eat or junk food do you eat on a daily basis how is your diet is it carb heavy is it um you know is it heavy with protein these are all things that could make a difference right um how much do you sleep uh, how much do you exercise that is a huge factor um are you somebody who works out in the gym on a regular basis or are you someone who's sedentary and have obesity because of that um or are you someone who will occasionally go for a walk or you know exercise three times a week genetic factors are factors that we uh, inherit in a, in a family and it may increase your risk of developing certain conditions and we'll talk about this a little more family history so like i said along with your genetic factors we tend to share our family along with our you know our dietary factors along with our lifestyle as well so when we think about um, family history we know that there are multiple people in the family who may eat together and eat alike right so they may eat this eat similar kinds of food they may tend to eat um uh, fatty foods together or may tend to go out over the weekends and and binge um sometimes they may go out with their friends and have binge drinking um at the same time you also tend to share similar lifestyles with your family so you may influence or you may get influenced by other family members so if somebody in your family is exercising more frequently there is highly likely that you are more motivated to exercise yourself so these are additional factors other than the genetic factors that you tend to share with your family members environmental factors so these are um, you know factors that for example like pollution your nutrition that you get how much amount of uh, nutrients are uh, are available in your food um you know are you exposed to radiation these are all factors that can increase or decrease your risk of developing various conditions so when you put all of these factors together it can either increase your risk of developing the condition or decrease your risk for um developing the condition okay so when you are looking at all of these risk factors this image is a really good visualization of what the risk factors can do so it's about balancing all these risk factors together so you have the first scenario wherein there are a set of individuals who have a variant a and there are a set of individuals who have a variant b individuals who have a variant a are slightly at a higher likelihood from the genetic perspective to develop let's say type 1 diabetes individuals who have the variant t have a lower likelihood of developing the diabetes all right now you compound these or you put together your lifestyle factors and your dietary and exercise patterns together so in the second scenario the individuals who had the variant a along with having the genetic predisposition or the susceptibility they also drink and smoke what does that do 
it increases their risk of developing the diabetes altogether right at the same time in scenario 2 there are individuals who have this variant called t which has a lower susceptibility or likelihood of developing the diabetes right and along with that they also exercise and they eat healthy so what that what does that do it reduces the risk further of developing these conditions okay then you have your scenario 3 wherein you have the individuals a where they already had a genetic susceptibility to develop diabetes but they are healthier they have a healthy lifestyle they are exercising well they are eating well and that balances their risk of developing these conditions and reduces the chance that they will develop diabetes on the other hand people who have the variant t which re- increases the risk of developing the condition oh sorry reduces the risk of developing the condition but they have been smoking and they have alcohol intake and have an unhealthy lifestyle this will overall again increase the risk of developing the condition so this essentially means that your genetic factors or these susceptibility factors alone these snips alone is not enough for you to have the genetic for you to have the health condition this may be a trigger but it doesn't mean that it's going to shoot the bullet right so it is a trigger but the remaining lifestyle dietary factors are things that will shoot the bullet and you will want increase the risk significantly to develop these conditions in your life so i hope this image was a, a helpful explanation for you know the basis of why we are looking at these snips right So this is an age old saying but I think it's very very apt in this age is prevention is better than cure especially post covid um and what this essentially means is while you cannot modulate your genetic factors you cannot control what you receive from your parents neither can you control what you pass on to your children what you can control is the remaining is to one know if you have a genetic susceptibility or predisposition to develop these conditions two you can control um your lifestyle your dietary factors you can make sure that you are healthier you are taking care of yourself um and you're monitoring yourself at a regular um interval so that if there is a possibility of any changes in your health that that is caught early right these are things that are in your control and that's your tool box so you can use these uh, little tools to make sure that you are taking care of yourself and you're healthy rather than um you know trying to fix something that's broken after you've developed a condition or a disease so preventative health care which essentially is focusing on detecting the disease early especially when there is a window or an opportunity for treatment for an earlier treatment and an improved outcome so our agenda is to make sure that we are able to identify these health conditions uh, or possibility of happening um, earlier so that we can take certain steps to reduce our risk to make sure that we can be healthy make sure that we can um, you know try and uh, work on our management so that it reduces your risk of having a chronic disease or an acute disease over a long period of time so i'm sure most of us have had at least one person in our family who has had for example type 2 diabetes which usually starts in our 40s um but as the person grows older as the diabetes gets more severe um you know gets difficult to control with medications and somebody switch to an insulin which again or you know they may try multiple medications and change different things um eventually what we see is that diabetes does end up affecting your eyes your kidneys your heart so you know what happens is this is this chronic health issue that keeps escalating so if there is a way where you can reduce your risk of developing diabetes even before it starts and know that you are at risk then that significantly reduces the chances that you will have other complications in life and that you will have a better chance at a healthier aging process as we grow older So personalized genomics is essentially a pathway to a healthier person, healthier you. What it does is one it, it helps us understand, you know, these vital traits that might increase our risk of developing conditions, mitigates your health risks, so it reduces the chances that you will have 
uh, various health concerns by making sure you have an action plan that you can use to reduce your risk of developing the condition, uh, provide you with the access to the breast treatment. So we will talk a little bit about pharmacogenomics or how genetics can help in identifying the best medication that might work for you. It will improve quality of life because as you start living healthier, the quality of life will also become healthier. You will have a better chance to, um, you know, have a healthy aging process, have lesser pains in life and lesser health issues. Um, and it helps you detect life-threatening conditions at an earlier age before it can get fatal. Overall, all of these put together reduces the risk or reduces the costs at healthcare. So, we know that you know having treatments whether it's for cardiac and you know, cardiac vascular diseases you know having an angioplasty having a bypass um, are expensive the same with cancers it is an expensive process it is painful it is expensive um, but if we are attempting to be healthier if we are trying to reduce our risk of developing these diseases would eventually bring down the healthcare costs as well and improve our quality of life so this is a bit of a background on what we are essentially doing. So if you take an individual where the risk of developing the disease varies amongst all of us, so there are some of us who may have a moderate risk, there are some of us who may have a high risk, and some of us who have a normal risk. So let's say the people in blue color are the individuals who don't have an increased risk of developing conditions or health-related issues, while the people who are marked off in red and pink are the individuals with a moderate or a high risk of developing certain genetic condition bases their genetic makeup, right? The genetic testing is essentially assessing these individuals before they have become symptomatic or rather before they have developed any signs or symptoms and stratify them into groups. One are individuals who are genetically at a higher risk of developing these conditions and one, a group of individuals who are at a normal or a baseline risk of developing these conditions. The people who have a higher risk or who are marked in red and pink doesn't necessarily have to go and develop the condition. It is not a 100% chance, but it increases the risk as compared to the normal population. And so an early intervention um, can be helpful to make sure that we can manage and manifest the onset of the disease. Um, and make sure that they, even if they develop the condition, that they are being managed well and have been identified at an earlier stage where it's not as severe, right? Um, now, the people in blue, although they don't have a genetic risk, there are these other factors we talked about, your lifestyle, your diet, your family history, which may actually increase your risk of developing these conditions anyway. Um, so it is important to understand that, uh, you know, not, just the genetic factors, but even the absence of genetic factors, somebody can go on and develop these conditions, right? So now think about how can genetic information actually give you the power to unlock your DNA um, or that can in turn help you open your life to a healthier life and healthier self, healthier person, right? So one of the products that I want to talk about today is Genome Patri. So this, um, you know, just like your parents probably saw your uh, Janam Patri when you were born or your Kundli when you were born, you know, to know what's ahead of you in life. Um, Genome Patri is essentially, um, you know, the, the uh, data that can unlock your health and it can unlock the data to a healthier self. We also have many other uh, products, including Medicamap, Cardio, Gynac. All of these are focused on various health concerns. Uh, MyFitGene, for example, is for somebody who is more interested in understanding what muscle type they have and what kind of sports maybe, uh, you know, may work out better for them, what kind of workouts may work better, what nutrition may, may work better. Um, genome Patri Immunity has recently been launched as, uh, as a test that can also help you understand about uh, your immunity against COVID and various other conditions. Um, Nutrigene focuses on nutrigenomics, wherein your genetic information can actually help you understand what kinds of foods uh, might be more suitable for you, what may not work, and what is a possible genetic risk for deficiencies in various micro and macronutrients so that you can make sure that you have a, a nutrition plan that's personalized for you um, and that can be the best 
so that your growth and your nutrition can be healthiest and, and the most suited. Genome Pathway Heritage is a test that looks for your ancestry. So it is uh, something that is customized to the Indian population, to the Indian heritage as well. So if anybody is curious about, you know, what, where you come from or what kind of ancestry do you have, you can compare your DNA makeup to the remaining parts of the world to understand what part and how much part of, you know, different parts of the world do you come from. So let's talk about genome patri and talk about these specific tests. You know, what it does, it allows you to understand, allows you to understand the various genetic variations that somebody may have. It allows you to understand how it could impact your health. Uh, we offer genetic counseling as a part of the test, wherein we will sit down with you and discuss the findings. And essentially, it helps you come up with an action plan for your future, understand how you could use this genetic information to plan your, uh, plan your family uh, health and assessments. Um, how it works, it's a simple process wherein uh, sample collection is done using a swab. So it's essentially like a cotton bud that you have to wrap at the insides of your cheek. It's completely painless. Um, it's a simple instruction kit that is sent to your home. Uh, along with proper instructions written, written down, you can just follow the steps and you can ship the sample back to us at the lab. At the lab, once your DNA is isolated and processed, the quality control is looked at and we are making sure that all the tests are done to make sure your DNA is ready for further processing. Um, your DNA is then analyzed or so your genetic information is read. So just like you would read a book, uh, we read your genetic information to understand what are the different variations that uh, you uh, may potentially be carrying. And then a report is generated. Once the report is generated, you have a conversation with one of the genetic counselors who can then help you understand the various uh, health concerns that have come up or different kinds of assessments that you can do to make sure that you continue to remain healthy. So how do you calculate these risk scores that I've been talking about or the genetic scores? So we calculate this using something called polygenic risk scores or PRS. This estimates individuals' genetic risk or predisposition for a particular trait or a condition. So for example, in genome per three, there are some of these fun traits too. You know, what is your risk for uh, having a higher dependency on caffeine? What's your risk of having black hair or brown eyes? And along with that, you also look at a set, various sets of uh, health conditions, including cardiovascular diseases, neuropsychiatric diseases, cancers, gastrointestinal concerns, um, and nutrition, as well as performance-based concerns. So... PRS or the polygenic risk score is essentially a sum of all the known common variants that we have, which calculates the particular genetic risk for one condition. At MapMyGenome, we have a machine learning ability and algorithm that is available that is patented uh, for calculations of these risk scores. Um, and we provide that information to you in the report as a genetic risk score as compared to the general population or people who may not have that particular genetic makeup. So insights that it can help you is one into your uh, family history, understand who else is at risk or what kinds of lifestyle do you share or nutrition you share that might increase or decrease your risk of developing these conditions. Uh, macronutrient is essentially how do you balance your carbohydrate, protein, uh, fats in your food that can help you achieve the best health that you would uh, want. Lifestyle choices, so for example, how much exercise uh, can you do and what type of exercise might best suit you. Um, sleep patterns, we also understand who is a good sleeper, light sleeper, early waker, and you can modify your lifestyle based on that. Mental acuity and, and sharpening, we know that a lot of us, um, you know, may have, um, for example, have a tendency to, you know, keep repeating certain mistakes that we have. Or some of us may have a healthier brain aging process and we want to know how we can make sure that we can reduce our risk of developing conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Um, along with that, you know, understanding activity and what types of activity might best suit you are all the basic information that you can get. Um, 
we also get information on various medications what types of medications may work what types of medication may not work for you as well it's also referred to as pharmacogenomics so genome patri gives you information about your respiratory diseases cardiac diseases diabetes cancers immunological factors neurological factors as well as the set of basic medications common medications that it can address so talking a little bit about the pharmacogenomics or uh, you know how your medications or various types of medications might work for you so all of us you know at some point of life have taken a particular medication so a simple example is um you know my my dad for example had type 2 diabetes was diagnosed a few years back and he's on metformin right now mom has recently been identified to have type 2 diabetes and she said okay let me just take the same medication it's just metformin that is used for type 2 diabetes but the same medication doesn't work for my mom why does that happen so we know that how you intake a particular drug and how do you digest it and how does that have efficacy in you can vary from one person to the other so essentially we know for some individuals certain drugs may have toxicity meaning it can have an adverse reaction along with it it may not work it may not be beneficial for them for some individual you may have drug toxicity but it may be something that works well it is beneficial it has it it's doing its job but you have some some kind of reaction or some side effects to it so whether it's you know nausea vomiting dizziness mild ones right for some people neither does it have any toxicity but at the same time it just doesn't function it's not working the metformin doesn't control the diabetes and for some people which is the best group wherein the particular drug is the is you know has a 100% efficiency or is working the best and has had no side effects or adverse reaction so that is the best situation that you want to be in so what are these factors that affects how you would respond to a particular drug so we know there are intrinsic factors so for example age gender your ethnicity your genetics how is how good is your organ you know is your kidneys at 100% function is your liver at 100% function if you have any other comorbidities do you have cardiovascular disease along with diabetes um and pregnancy these are all factors that can change the way a particular medication might actually work for you um at the same time there are certain extrinsic factors meaning these are factors that uh, for example are taking multiple drugs or drug to drug interaction um you know that may um change the way your medications might work for you alcohol intake dietary intake or environmental factors so when we look at uh, our genetic makeup we can actually use that to predict how your response to a particular medication might be and this is extremely useful especially for people who are already identified to have genetic condition i mean to have these health conditions like diabetes or cancers or psychiatric conditions we know in psychiatric condition 70% of the people keep changing the medication before because it doesn't work for you and in fact fda has a a set or a class of medications that has been listed out including warfarin which is the common medication given to people who have cardiac issues where genetics should be first looked at before prescribing the dosage and the amount of drug that should be given and this is because uh, this is essentially to mitigate the the risks that the drug may potentially have okay so i'll give you two scenarios to better understand how this information can actually help somebody right so scenario 1 there is an individual who says why should i do these kinds of tests at an early age i'm just 30 years old i'll get it done when i'm about 40 right i don't have health issues like heart diseases diabetes or vision related problems right at 30 you're mostly healthy you're like i'm just going on with my life So this is a thirty percent, thirty year old male who's healthy with a BMI of twenty. But if you look at his family history, his father actually died at forty five after two episodes of fainting, and he's never had a preventative health checkup done, right? So when we look at individuals like these, thirty years is actually not early for a preventative health examination. Health screenings usually begin at the age of eighteen, especially if there is a family history that is present. So. based on this particular history and early screening and detection can actually help him uh, to understand his treatments and prognosis better 
we know such family histories can be associated with conditions of the heart where your rhythm is not functioning properly and all of this should be screened for earlier we know that there are genetic factors that can cause an increased risk of such conditions so if this person is not aware of something like this has not screened himself for it there is a very high chance that he may have the condition just like his dad and a high chance that he may have a severe um you know cardiac related issue like his dad has had which never got picked up in the first place so it's never too early to start your health screening right i'll give you another scenario so this is a male who's 25 is unmarried but he has obesity he does 30 minutes of power yoga he's on diet but he's not losing weight so he says why do i need preventative health screening i know that i have a weight problem and i am taking steps towards it right what will happen to me anyway so we know being overweight is a independent risk factor for several conditions type 2 diabetes um cardiovascular issues blood pressure um kidney function all of these can get affected uh the question is he is doing power yoga he is having uh, you know he is on diet but he is not losing weight does he know whether he is genetically more prone to having increased amount of fats in his body are there any such vitamin deficiencies that can help him what kind of exercise might potentially help him so our muscles essentially have two types of fibers we know that certain people are better at doing some forms of exercise as compared to other people who may be better at doing different kinds of exercises so some people may be better of doing endurance sports which is you know long runs so like marathon cycling some people may be genetically better at doing high intensity exercises so for example hiit um or you know doing um uh, boxing for example so depending on how your body makeup is is it more prone for uh, exercise uh, you know based on endurance or power you can actually have a better outcome of your diet and exercise patterns so this person would actually benefit from testing so that he can actually modulate the way his diet and exercise is to have a better outcome of his uh, concern that he has right now so at map mind you know we have genetic counselors um you know who provide a personalized information personalized action plan based on your genomic information along with that we consider your personal history your lifestyle factors family history to come up with this management plan for you so after you have undergone a genetic test with us we meet with we you will meet with a genetic counselor from our team who will sit down with you and ask you um and talk to you about your report but also ask you about questions about your personal and family history to then um put these factors together and come up with a plan for you just a little bit about the company mapai genome is a leading genomics company headquartered in hyderabad we have over 16 years of experience uh with a team of biotechnologists statisticians geneticists genetic counselors um our idea is a genetic health profile with your family history and genetic counseling can give you actionable steps toward towards a healthier life so being forearmed is uh, you know being forewarned is being forearmed and i hope that you know this information has helped you understand how you can unlock your potential of your dna to have a healthier life uh, and a healthier aging process um please feel free to ask any questions we are here for having an interactive session um i hope this was helpful thank you thank you so much uh, nishna for that uh, wonderful presentation and a lot of information in terms of uh, how genes work and how they can tell you information uh, that you can uh, use to sort of get into a better health perspective right uh, i would also uh, request all the participants to to you know raise your hands if you have any queries regarding this i can move you to panel and you can interact with neecha directly ask your questions and get them clarified in the meanwhile i'm also launching a poll to get some feedback on the session uh, request everyone to spare a few minutes and give us feedback so that it will help us to curate more sessions like this going forward right and uh, if you don't want to raise your hands you can always put your questions in the chat box the chat box is open for you uh to put in your questions or you can just raise your hand i can uh, move it to the panel 
and also i wanted to uh, share something in regards to the session we are having today uh, uh, map my genome has uh, come forward to to sort of provide a, a free uh, pre genetic uh, genetic counseling to all the participants who are interested to get a pre genetic counseling and also they are offering us a good discount on their genome patri product i would uh, like to paste the link here where you can avail uh, this particular service if you are interested if you know you uh, sat through the session if you are interested to know what your genes has to tell you uh, you can always get your test done uh, and i will also want to share a personal experience uh, nobody knows about this but uh, i am someone who who got my genetic testing done in the year 2018 uh one of my uh, ex bosses uh, uh had this test done and he just uh, told me that you know shiva why don't you get one done and and uh, you know uh, we got a test done and uh, to my surprise uh, there was one point uh, in the you know pre report that i was uh, having high risk of alcohol addiction uh which i was at that point uh, was uh, you know thought uh, could be a possibility Uh, that actually helped me uh, to stay away from it it's and and you know, lead a healthy life post that uh, but uh, today now uh, when i see, i look back i realize so maybe i really had that uh, possibility of getting addicted uh, to something like that right so there a lot of insights uh, you know uh, in terms of your health risk and uh, you know we all uh, want to live longer we all want to do our bit to our families and our dependents uh, as much as we can so i would uh, recommend everyone who's interested to get a, se- a test and to sort of uh, you know uh, get on the link here that is available on the chat box and you can use the code ethica right so ethica is the code e t h i k a ethica is the code you will all also get an email uh, with the link and the coupon code Uh, post the session but uh, anybody who wants to get a test done and you can use this link to book your test and use the code to get a 1500 off on the test uh, uh, right away right and uh, any any and any other questions uh, from the audience uh, that is directed towards neeraja uh, she she is ready to answer all that so we have uh, one question from pooja says do health issues like pcod and pcos arise due to genes yes some some so these are considered multifactorial there are genetic basis to PC, pcod and pcos but along with that your other factors like your obesity like concerns including um you know gynec related issues can actually reduce or increase the risk of development so it is something that we do look for and we counsel you for when you come in and speak with us okay uh we have a next question from mrs suni saying how is it different from a diagnostic blood test So essentially the diagnostic blood test is looking for genetic changes that essentially causes a condition the snips that i talked about today which are these single nucleotide polymorphisms are correlated so what that means is if i take a group a and if i take a group b like we did in the picture earlier even though people may not have the the genetic change it may still cause a particular disease so what it means is a genetic change in itself is not 100% enough for you to develop the condition unlike no, in a right. diagnostic genetic testing uh we the genetic test we are looking for essentially causes the condition there is a genetic change that causes a change in the way the protein functions and may cause a health issue right so these are different tests here we are looking more from the perspective of common genetic variants that the population has right. which puts you at a risk of developing certain conditions okay and uh, nija even i want to ask you a question uh, coming from my side that uh, the information that we get on the report uh, post uh, the genetic testing right correct uh, they are uh, categorized as high risk medium risk and low risk correct so what are the chances that something that is in the low risk segment of uh, you know chances of happening uh, or these popping up uh, at a later stage in your life what are, what are the chances that you know these because we usually tend to sort of not look at low risk things right and and 
mostly concentrate on high risk or medium risk right so what are the chances that these these low risks might also uh, happen yeah that's that's a great point you make and actually retrospectively thinking about it you know i i was thinking about did i look at the low risk on my report and i just it just struck me that i probably didn't look at it you know because as you said rightly that you tend to look at the risk that are marked off as high but what's the chance that you will develop the risks that marked off as low or moderate uh, at the general population so that's the reason why we actually do the genetic counseling appointment is because we know that there are lifestyle dietary management factors that can increase or decrease your risk so for example someone who may not have a genetic predisposition to develop blood pressure uh um, but is somebody who you know eats a lot of junk food eats lot of pickles um is not you know exercising much and has obesity they have dietary as well as lifestyle factors that definitely increases their risk of developing blood pressure you find high salt content in in a lot of snacks in a lot of pickles um not exercising having obesity are major risk factors for developing blood pressure so even though this person is genetically at a low risk based on the remaining factors they are the risk is higher so what we do at mapman genome is when you come in for a genetic counseling appointment we do assess the remaining factors not just the genetic factors but the remaining factors as well and in fact you get a report which is we refer to as a secondary report which puts all of these together and it modulates your final risk which is a combination of all of these factors so even though this person may not have a blood pressure to be a genetically at a high risk after the counseling appointment it will be marked as at a moderate or a high risk because of the remaining factors that that person has so good question uh, thanks nejar for that answer uh, so uh, nejar we also have sanchit jain asking us that uh, if we could uh, provide a sample report along yes. with the uh, link in the email yes. Right? Yes. Okay. We can so arrange Sanchit, for that. Yeah, Sanchit, uh, please expect a sample report to come your way uh, with the email that is going to come on Monday with the link and uh, other specifications as well. Any other questions do we have from the audience? Uh, we are here to answer. Either we have a very shy audience today, or uh, anybody <laughs> under, understood uh, whatever we spoken about. Or it was too complex and it didn't make. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, so Shweta the says that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, Shweta, the report is absolutely private. No, it's neither is your genetic information shared, neither is your report shared. As soon as the sample comes to our lab, your sample is completely de-identified. It's given a unique ID or a code. and the remaining information remains completely private so it is not something that we share with anybody and your report is only confidential and private to you it will be emailed to you and then uh, it will be shared with the counselor during the session yeah so it is as there's your bank statement yeah. where you need to put in a code and then only you can open the document so that's yeah. the kind of security that is so we have bravity who wants to ask a question directly uh rimti if you can hear me you can unmute yourself you can switch on your video and ask your question yeah hello yeah yeah, yeah. we can hear you. yeah yeah maybe because uh, i'm using the link that was forwarded by revati uh oh, okay so, so maybe that yeah, name has we, popped up yes yeah. we see the name as revati ramu right right yeah um yeah my name is subrat hi subrat uh my question was around like somebody who has already been diagnosed uh, with a genetic um disorder how is this uh test going to help like someone in my family has a uh, marfan syndrome mm -hmm. so um uh, does this test add more value to that i mean having known that he is already having uh this genetic disorder good question so marfan syndrome is a genetic condition that is a, a diagnostic condition it, it's a syndrome wherein we know those individuals are already at risk of developing certain conditions for example individuals with marfan syndrome are at, are at a higher risk of having cardiovascular diseases um for example having sudden heart attacks having um 
you know fainting episodes and having cardiomyopathy so this particular report may help them understand if there are other risk factors we need to look for like are they genetically more susceptible to type 2 diabetes which is not a part of the syndrome are they more susceptible to develop cancers which is not a part of the syndrome and it could actually help the family members to have a better plan uh for their management and their treatment along with the syndromic related issues that the person already has um but this genetic testing does not look at marfan syndrome specifically so i want to be clear about that so if they are looking for understanding what caused the marfan syndrome genetically then that's a different genetic test uh mm-hmm. it's a diagnostic test that we'll need to do however the test like a genome patrick will add value because it, if he that person is at risk for simple chronic lifestyle related issues that we all have which is not a part of the the health condition he already is facing with then it can at least give the family members a preempted information that okay we could probably look at modifying some of the remaining factors in his diet or his lifestyle that can potentially keep him healthier and reduce further burden of the disease that he has okay thank you sure thank you for the clarification thank you mr super Thanks for that. Uh, do we have any other questions? I think so. Okay. So I think uh, that is it from uh, the question and answers nature. Thank you so much for taking the time again and answering all the questions very patiently. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this session for us. is very very informative and uh, we look forward to you know sharing more information on this with an email that we're sending to all the attendees where they can take a look at the example report and understand what all the report uh, contains and and maybe you know if there are any questions uh, uh, from the audience you can email uh, these questions to me i can have it forwarded to neeraj and get them answered uh, right so Absolutely. that can happen thank you so Absolutely. much all the audience also for uh, joining in today for uh, sitting throughout the session and trying to understand to you know to choose that path of uh, wellness uh, for you and your family members absolutely thank you, so thank you shiva thank you for the time and i appreciate and thanks the audience for a patient listening i look forward to meeting with you guys thank you so much take care thank you bye now